हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू माई चैनल आई एम रोहिणी हरिदास वर्किंग एज एन असिस्टंट प्रोफेसर इन इलेक्ट्रिकल इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट एट मौलाना मुख्तार अहमद नडवी टेक्निकल कैंपस मालेगाव इन दिस वीडियो वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द इसेंशियल क्वालिटीज ऑफ प्रोटेक्शन सिस्टम लेटेस्ट सी द ऑब्जेक्टिव आफ्टर वॉचिंग दिस वीडियो यू विल एबल टू explain the following terms in context with the protection system that is selectivity sensitivity speed reliability simplicity and economy also you will able to compute the dependability security and reliability of relay from the available data before discussing the actual topic it should be noted that the use of term protection does not indicate or imply that the protection equipment can prevent the trouble such as faults and equipment failures it cannot anticipate the trouble the protective relays act only after an abnormal conditions has occurred thus protection does not mean prevention but rather it means minimizing the duration of trouble and limiting damage outage time and relatives that may results otherwise the fundamental objective of protection system is to provide isolation of faulty part quickly without disturbing the rest of the system so within this context there are six basic qualities of the protection system let us see one by one selectivity sensitivity speed reliability it has two aspects dependability and security simplicity and economy we will discuss one by one in detail now let us see the first essential quality that is selectivity it is the ability of the protective system to detect or select that part of the power system at which the fault occurs and disconnect only that part without disturbing the rest of the system so to achieve the selectivity entire power system is divided into several protective zones the protective zone is the separate zone which is established around each system element for example the generator will have the separate protection zone transformer will have its separate protection zone like this the significance of such a protective zone is that any fault occurring within that particular zone will cause the tripping of the relay which causes the opening of the circuit breaker located within that zone only so only the faulty section will get isolated and rest of the system will remain unaffected also the protection system should able to distinguish between the normal condition and the abnormal condition meaning is that the protective system should operate only during the abnormal condition and should not operate under the normal condition also it should be able to distinguish between whether the abnormal condition is within its protective zone or not meaning is that the protective system should not operate for the abnormal condition beyond its protective zone this property is also known as discrimination so for the internal fault the circuit breaker within that zone will be open so isolate only that faulty part leaving healthy part intact also protective relay should not operate for the faults outside its protective zone that is for the external fault please note that internal fault means if the fault occurs within the protective zone then it is called as internal fault if it is outside its protective zone then it is called as external fault so the relay should operate for internal faults only and it should not operate for the external fault to achieve the selectivity 
now if it operate if it is not selective and operates for the fault beyond its protective zone then what will happen unnecessarily larger portion of the system will get disconnected so it is nothing but selectivity is the maximum continuity of the service with minimum system disconnection now let us consider the system where each element is provided with its separate zone of protection it may be seen that the circuit breakers are located in the connections to each power system element in order to disconnect only that part in case of the fault now if the fault occurs at the bus bar on the last zone please refer the figure on the screen then to achieve the selectivity only the circuit breaker nearest to the fault that is circuit breaker number 10 11 12 and 13 should open so that only faulty section should get isolated without affecting the rest of the system if any other breaker will operate to clear this fault then it will cause the disconnection of more part of the same than necessary so it's a usual practice to divide entire power system into the several zones to achieve the selectivity now next essential quality is the sensitivity the relay should operate when the magnitude of actuating quantity exceeds the preset value called as peak up value for example if it's an overcurrent relay and its setting is 5 ampere so the relay should operate only when the magnitude of current exceeds the 5 ampere that is if it exceeds the peak up value then only the relay should operate the relay should not operate when actuating quantity is below its peak up value also the relay should be sufficiently sensitive to operate when actuating quantity just exceeds its peak up value so sensitivity is defined as it is the ability of the relay system to operate with low value of the actuating quantity it is the function of volt ampere input to the coil of the relay necessary to cause its operation so smaller the volt ampere input required to cause the relay operation more sensitive is the relay that is one volt ampere input relay is more sensitive than 5 volt ampere input relay next essential quality is the speed the protection system should be fast enough to isolate the faulty part of the system as quickly as possible if the faulty section is not disconnected quickly then it will cause damage to the system the longer the fault persists on the system larger is the damage to the system also higher is the possibility that the system will lose the stability we know that the failures on the system leads to the great reduction in the system voltage if the faulty section is not disconnected quickly then the low voltage created by the fault may shut down the consumer's motor and generator on the system and thus the system may become unstable also high speed protection system decreases the possibility of development of one fault into other more severe type thus it helps a lot if the entire process of fault detection and removal of faulty part is accomplished in very short time as possible therefore speed of protection is very important however it must be mentioned that the speed and the accuracy bears an inverse relationship that is high speed protection system tends to be less accurate as has lesser amount of information at its disposal than the slow speed system and therefore protection engineer has to strike a balance between these two incompatible requirements next one is the reliability which means the trustworthiness 
that is assurance that the system will perform correctly. The protective railing should not fail to operate in the event of fault in the protected zone. Also, there should not be any fault in the component of the protective system itself. The protective system is a teamwork of several components. A failure or the defect in any one of them can result in failure of entire protection system. Hence, the basic requirements of the reliable protection is the reliability of each components including circuit breaker, CT, PT, trip circuit, battery, etc. Also, the quality of components, choice and the design of protection system, installation, maintenance, etc. also plays very important role. All these aspects are mentioned in figure. Please refer the screen. It is clear that the reliability of protective system depends on diverse aspects and a good reliability is a task to be shared by protective gear manufacturers, electricity boards and associates. There are two aspects of the reliability. First one is dependability and second one is security. We will see one by one. As discussed earlier, reliability has two aspects. So let us see first one that is dependability. It is the ability to perform correctly when required. A relay is said to be dependable if it trips only when it is expected to trip. This happens either when the fault is in primary zone of protection or when it is called upon to provide the backup protection. Dependability is the degree of certainty that the relay will operate correctly. So, Percentage dependability is given by number of correct trips divided by number of desired trips into 100. Please note that the dependability can be improved by increasing the sensitivity of the relaying system. Second aspect of reliability is the security. It is the ability to avoid the unnecessary operation. A relay is said to be secure if it does not trip when it is not expected to trip. Security is a property used to characterize the false tripping of the relay. It is the degree of certainty that the relay will not operate incorrectly. So, percentage security is given by number of correct trips divided by total number of trips into 100. Now let us revise once again. Reliability means trustworthiness or you can say it is the assurance that the system will perform correctly. It has two aspect. The first one is the dependability means the ability to perform correctly when required and it is given by percentage dependability is equal to number of correct trips divided by number of desired trips into 100. Second aspect is the security which means that ability to avoid unnecessary operation. So, percentage security is given by number of correct trips divided by total number of trips into 100. Thus, reliability is computed as percentage reliability is equal to number of correct trips divided by number of desired trips plus number of incorrect trips into 100. Now, to have the better understanding of reliability, dependability and security, let us consider one example. The performance of an overcurrent relay was monitored over a period of one year. It was found that relay operated 14 times out of which 12 were the correct trips. If the relay failed to issue trip decision on three occasions, compute dependability, security and reliability of the relay. So, we will see the given data. Relay operated 14 times, that is total number of trips is equal to 14, out of which 12 were the correct trips. So, number of correct trips is equal to 12. If the relay failed to issue trip decision on the three occasions, 
प्लीज नोट दैट इट इज डिजायर्ड दैट इट शुड इश्यू द ट्रिप सिग्नल बट इट इज फेल टू इश्यू सो नंबर ऑफ डिजायर ट्रिप्स इक्वल टू ट्वेल्व प्लस थ्री विच इज नथिंग बट फिफ्टीन a desired trip may not happen for the various reasons like struck circuit breaker incorrect setting of the relay or poor maintenance of the circuit breaker etc so let us compute percentage dependability equal to number of correct trips divided by number of desired trips into 100 so from the given data it is 12 divided by 15 into 100 which gives 80% similarly percentage security is equal to number of correct trips divided by total number of trips into 100 again from the given data it is 12 divided by 14 into 100 which gives 85.71% now let us compute percentage reliability the number of correct trips divided by number of desired trips plus number of incorrect trips so it is 12 divided by number of desired trips that is 15 plus number of incorrect trips please refer the numerical here the relay operated 14 times out of which 12 were the correct trips so number of incorrect trips will be equal to what 14 minus 12 which is nothing but 2 so it is 12 divided by 15 plus 2 into 100 which gives 70.58% so you can observe here even though the dependability and security are individually above 80% but overall reliability is much poor that is only 70.58% next essential quality that is simplicity the protection system should be kept as simple and straight forward as possible so that it can be easily maintained the reliability is closely related to the simplicity meaning is that simple the protection scheme the greater will be its reliability so increasing use of solid state and digital technologies in the protective relaying provides many convenient possibilities for the increased sophistication and the last essential quality that is economy we are quite familiar in day to day life that there is an economic limit to the amount that can be spent on the different types of insurances in order to safeguard the life and the property similarly in a power system there is an economic limit to the amount that can be spent on the protection of the system it is fundamental to obtain maximum protection at minimum cost and cost is always a major factor please note that the protection cost are considered high when consider alone but it should be evaluated in the light of much higher cost of equipment they are protecting and the cost of outage through improper protection usually deciding the amount to be spent on the protection is very complex affair since the probability of failure or the fault is a function of component location or time etc all this factor leads to the different alternatives for the same protection and choice has to be made considering the economic justification the protection system should not cost more than 5% of the total cost but this constraint can be relaxed in case of protection of important equipment for example protection of generator or protection of main transmission line etc these are the some references if you like this video then please share and subscribe thank you